so the next kind of delay which we are going to discuss is the queuing delay or the buffering delay so it is queuing delay or you can say buffering delay buffering delay and then we'll discuss about the processing delay and then we discuss about the processing delay then we discuss about the processing delay so what is queuing buffering and processing delay assume this is the host h1 this is the host h1 this is the host h2 this is the host h2 and this is a transmission media between h1 and h2 this is a transmission media or you can say transmission link you can say it is transmission media or transmission link okay now we know that for h1 the time taken to place this packet to transmission link is transmission time and then for this packet to reach from host to destination that means for this packet to reach from here to here is the propagation delay that is tp now when this packet is going to reach at the host then at the host this packet may not be processed as soon as it is reached why it may not be processed because in case of host there will be an operating system which will be processing the packets now that operating system may be currently doing some kind of tasks or it may be executing some different kind of different process for example it may be it may be scheduling a process accordingly and the cpu is currently busy doing some other kind of processing now in that case that packet will be placed inside a queue that packet will be placed inside a queue this is a queue and this is packet p1 packet p2 and packet p3 as you and the time for which a packet sits inside this queue is called as the queuing delay we can say the time for which the packet sits or you can say waits in the queue is queuing delay is called as queuing delay is called as queuing delay and generally we represent the queuing delay as tq or it is also called as the buffering delay it is also called as the buffering delay or you can say buffering delay because this queue is acting as a buffer this queue is also acting as a buffer right so this is also called as buffering delay so we can also represent it like t buffer t buffer and then the when the host machine is going to have enough time to process this packet so it will take one packet in the order of their arrival and then it will take the packet and it will process it it will take the packet and it will process it now the time taken to process the packet is called as t processing or you can say the processing delay or you can say the processing delay the processing delay now this processing delay may vary from system to system because may may be having a fast processor may be having a slow processor in case of fast processor this processing delay will be very small in case of slow processor this processing delay will be very fast and it is it will also be dependent on the kind of scheduling algorithm the processor is using for example in case we can have round robin scheduling algorithm we can may be having round robin scheduling algorithm may be having any other different kind of scheduling algorithm so this processing delay is dependent on system the state of the system both these things for example this queuing delay or you can say t buffer and t processing t buffer and t processing they are dependent both of them are dependent on the state of the system both of them are dependent on state of the system state of the system that it, it may the process the server host may be doing some heavy processing if the host is already doing some kind of heavy processing obviously they may increase if the host is not doing any kind of processing and host is exactly free 
to process these packets immediately then it it uh, it will be very small right so we cannot actually predict what is the this processing delay and what is this buffering delay because it is dependent on the state of the system which may change consistently throughout the process so when we discuss about the total time of this communication when we discuss about the total time for this communication then what is the total time total time is transmission delay for this data packet plus transmission delay for the data packet plus propagation delay for the data packet plus plus the queuing delay or you can say the buffering delay for the data packet plus the processing delay for the data packet plus the processing delay for the data packet now if you discuss about this buffering and data buffering delay and processing delay this buffering delay and processing delay you cannot predict it why because it is dependent on the state of the system so this buffering delay and processing delay is dependent on dependent on state of the system right so you cannot predict it if in any question they are giving the buffering delay and processing delay then you can take it otherwise you can assume their values as zero assume their values as assume their values as zero you can assume their values as zero because you cannot be sure what what will be the buffering and processing delay if in case of any question in gate or ugc net examination they they are giving the buffer delay and the processing delay then you can take the delay otherwise you can ignore it so <coughs> what is the total time total time is the transmission delay plus propagation delay total time is transmission delay plus propagation delay uh, which we are going to get for doing this communication okay so these are the basic delays or you can say these are the basic terminologies which we needed before we start the discussion of the data link layer now we should discuss about the first topic that is the simple the flow control methods we'll start with the simple flow control methods um, then we we'll, uh, discuss about the stop and wait arq and then we'll go through the sliding window protocol and after sliding window protocol we'll discuss about go back end and selective repeat and then we'll compare all these methodologies with each other okay 